buongiorno a tutti. I'm curious, um, I'd like to ask everyone in the audience today, how many of you woke up this morning and before you got out of bed, checked your phone and spent at least 30 minutes on your phone text messaging or looking on the internet by a show of hands? Wow, <laughs> that's interesting. You know, I remember growing up as a child, and as a child, I learned to type on a typewriter, not on a computer. I used a VCR to tape television shows and movies. I used a 35-millimeter camera to take photographs. And I did research at the public library, not on the internet, the way kids do today. And I have to say, my days were fairly simple as a child and very consistent. On a typical day, I woke up in the morning, took a shower, had breakfast with my family, and had fewer than five interactions before the middle of the day. Now, when I think about the world where we are today, children now, as soon as they wake up in the morning, are grabbing their phone. And as soon as they grab their phone, they spend around 42 minutes in the morning checking Twitter, going on social media, looking at Instagram, posting things on the internet that most of the, the time their parents don't even know about. And they do the same thing in the evening. Right before they go to bed, they spend about an hour online, text messaging, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. And they really are so connected that they pretty much are plugged into the world in a way we've never seen before. Now, I remember when I was going to college, I had a really interesting experience that I'd like to share with you. Um, I was at university with uh, an Italian-American friend whose name was Zanoli, and he and I were going out for gelato one day, and as we were walking down the street at the University of South Carolina, we came across a group of people who were very angry in white robes, they were holding on to German Shepherd dogs, and they were screaming racial slurs at people around, a group known as the KKK, a very dangerous group, historically. And I remember as we were walking, Zanoli was wearing a T-shirt that read, Italians do it better. And I didn't even know at the time that these people don't like Italians, they don't like Catholics, they don't like people who have different color skin than them. And they said horrible things to us both. And in that moment, Zanoli defended us both and punched a couple of people in the face. And I was so surprised. But, you know, I thought about it, and you know, where we were then, people owned what they did. They took responsibility for their actions, and they also defended one another physically. Now, fast forward into 2015, we're fully connected with iPhones, Blackberries, iPads, laptops, de desktops, I know I routinely use Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I also have a very connected environment where even with my mobile phone today, I can check my sprinkler system and program the heat in my house. It's fantastic. But kids today have never known a world without internet, without phones. They often teach their parents how to use apps. They listen to music on their phones with Spotify. They take pictures with their phones. They research colleges online and watch videos about schools they are thinking about attending. Access to information is fantastic in the Internet age. And the speed and attention span of this generation is growing fast and furiously. Now, I often wonder, it's so great that we can do these things, but in the world of the Internet, kids today are suffering. They're being bullied, they're being attacked, they're being confronted online by people hiding behind their computers. But no face-to-face -face uh, interaction or real responsibility for their activity. They can hide behind their computers. And it's a terrible thing. But it's not just that. Children now have a blurred sense of reality. Parasocial relationships are relationships that are typically seen in psychiatry as pathological, where people have a sense of isolation. They're not communicating 
in real life so well. And these parasocial relationships are often with people who they connect with virtually, people who they follow, follow in social media. And they cannot differentiate between their real life relationships and these quasi-fake relationships with people who they've never met. I'm sure many people in this room today, and I'm also curious, how many of you have connected with somebody on social media that you've never met in your life, in real life, but you consider them close friends? That's so interesting. Children do that more than ever before. The problem is, when they follow celebrities on social media, they really believe that they're connected with celebrities. And it can become dangerous. In one case, there's a social media celebrity called Kylie Jenner. Beautiful girl, very talented, and she recently had some cosmetic surgery to change her appearance. Now, little girls who follow her in the millions online want to copy her, the same way I would want to copy my older cousin or a relative, but they're following these people who they don't know. And it's actually quite terrible, because what happens is, when they see this social media celebrity, they try to copy that person. And in this case, a number of girls try to copy her lips by sucking on shot glasses for hours at a time in an attempt to mimic her lips. And this is tragic and really, really unfortunate. We also see this with celebrities like Justin Bieber. I'm sure you all know who he is. And he poses himself in a way that he would consider himself gangster, right? Now, the problem here is that recently, a 13-year-old boy started taking images and videos of himself holding guns, smoking marijuana, and trying to be cool. He has 18,000 followers right now. That's dangerous. Where are we going? Parents need to take responsibility for what's going on in their children's lives and what they're doing on the internet. And it's not happening enough. You know, there's a story that makes me quite sad in thinking about it, and I can't unforget it. There was a little girl, teenager, in Canada who was raped by four boys who then decided to post the I images of what they had done to this girl on social media. And after posting it on social media, she was bullied by people who she thought who were her friends. This girl was so devastated that she took her own life. Well, she had a Facebook page, and she posted images of herself online. And unfortunately, after she passed, an online company decided to use her, use her images from her pub Facebook page without her parents knowing. And they started using that image to promote an escort service. Now, it's tragic that this is happening. It really, really is. So what I implore people to do, especially with your children, pay attention to what they're doing online. You simply must, because Whatever they do online will go with them through the rest of their lives. The memory of the internet is forever, so please pay attention.